Hi, I'm Brad with BigFamilyHomestead.com and today's video is super de duper special. That's right, it is the ultimate peep show. Let's get to it. Okay, sorry about the peep show thingy, but I can't help myself. You see why? It's because it's late February, which means that's almost early spring, which means it's time for baby chick season, and that is awesome. Chickens! Now for our homestead and our family, we absolutely love having chickens for eggs and for meat birds. Now that is so nice for us because not only is it an incredible savings when you figure out the cost of the bird and the feed and the way we supplement our animals, which I will talk a little bit about here in a, in a minute, how we supplement so that the feed costs don't get out of control. But when you consider all of those things and even the electricity it takes to run the heat lamp when they're little, we are literally paying about 45 cents a pound for free range organically grown, no GMO, no, no chemically pumped up saline solution chicken from some nasty factory that they just abuse these animals. This is the real deal. These things are absolutely happy and healthy birds, which will in turn make happy and healthy people because we're gonna have the benefit of their meat, we're gonna have the benefit of their eggs, uh, but today we're talking chicks and here it is. We, we basically went down to our Rural King store and it's almost spring. I mean, I, I, I'd be lying if I said it's not cold. It was literally negative 13 last night, but it's exciting times because spring is getting ready to spring or sprung or however you wanna do it. Anyway, but bottom line for us is we look forward to this time of year and they just had the chicks out today and we got 25 little Cornish rock meat birds and it didn't cost us that much money. Um, and so here we are and I wanna to talk to you a little bit about our chicks and why you absolutely gotta get your own hot chicks, yeah. Hot chicks, you say? Mm-hmm, I say yes. You gotta keep them under the heat lamp so they can stay healthy. Too soon? Okay, okay, sorry about that last little crack. It's just that I get so mm, verklempt when I start thinking about things like the chicken Brian recipe at Caraba's restaurants. Whew. Well, anyway, um, wanted to talk a little bit about more resources for you to learn more about different breeds, uh, different ways to keep your uh, chickens healthy, all manner of chickendom, and that is Backyard Chickens. Now, they make a magazine, but they also have an online website that is just amazing, jam-packed with a lot of information. There's all kinds of different, well, everything chickens. And one of the things that's super nice too is that they have a forum that is for open, you know, it's an open-ended forum so that users like you and me, uh, poultry-minded pals, if you will, uh, can go on there and discuss whatever's going on in your, your chicken world thingy. Another excellent resource is this book right here, The Joy of Keeping Chickens, The Ultimate Guide to Raising Poultry for Fun and Profit. And, and by profit, I, I don't think they mean like, you know, Moses and Aaron and, and Elijah, uh, but I digress. Okay, so one of the cool things about this book is not only is it well thought out and jam-packed with all kinds of delightful full-color photos, no, the information's really good. I really like the information, and um, that's funny. I actually sounded just like an infomercial. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, one of the things I really do like about this book is the chicken breed chart. And what it does is it tells you several, several, I mean, there's got to be a good 40 different breeds, uh, the class of bird they are, um, basically their productivity, how many eggs, if you're going for egg layers, how many eggs they'll lay generally, the egg color, the uh, meat, if they're good for meat, if they get you know nasty or uh, hard as the older they get, and also the temperament. This is really important for us because we've got little kids around and they tell you, you know, which birds are gonna get nasty, which birds are gonna stay nice. So this book is actually really, really chock full of delights. So you say, Brad, how hard is it to keep chickens and transition them into meat birds and so on and so forth? Well, I'll tell you, it's not hard at all. 
Matter of fact, it's really a lot of fun. And um, basically, you've got a few stages. Now these animals, the ones that we get, the breed of birds that we get are Cornish rocks. They are specifically designed, they've been over the years, they've been bred in a certain way that they are not going to live that long. They're going to get to full size, full maturity at about six weeks. Now can you believe that? From egg to six weeks, but that, that's the case and you get nice big birds. Now I will say this, that last, uh, the last run of animals, the last run of chickens that we had, we let them go a little bit too long. They got to be about eight weeks, eight and a half, and these things were monsters. I mean monsters. They were literally like small turkeys. So, but you don't want to let them go that long because they can actually get too big and then they can hurt themselves. They'll literally get so big that their legs will get damaged. They can even break their legs. They can, they can get hurt. So they're designed for that zero to six week period. So that's something you definitely have to plan on that you don't really want to exceed that. It's best for the animal, it's best for you, best for your pocketbook in terms of feed and everything. And so just keep that in mind, zero to six weeks with a Cornish rock. Now that said, if you are getting chickens for layers, there's a whole completely different set of animals. You can even get Easter eggs, like, they, well, not, I mean, they don't make Easter eggs. They, they call them <laughs> Easter egg layers, and that it's because they can have different colored eggs. We've had them where they're green and blue, and they're really, really cool, but there's so many different kinds of chickens. What in the world? Huh? Oh my gosh, somebody's quite the overachiever. One way we keep our feed costs very low is with our wheatgrass and our sprouted grain growing system. And when they get a little bit bigger, when they're a little bit bigger, we put them outside to free range in their big old chicken yard so they can scratch around and get bugs and all kinds of goodies for them. And it's not only that it's, it's cheaper for us, but it's better for them. It makes them healthier, they're happier. It's good all the way around. Chickens. Seriously though, you gotta be warned, if you're the kind of person that gets attached to your animals, more like pets, you uh, may have a hard time transitioning from chick to meat bird to the plate. So keep that in mind, that even though these things are just amazingly cute and a lot of fun, you've gotta get it in your head right now, they serve a purpose on your farm and or homestead, and uh, that is ultimately to be part of the food cycle. Would you look at those adorably hot chicks? Booyah! Way to go, ladies. Now, one other little uh, tidbit, uh, dollop of info nugget <laughs> of information that I think that everyone watching should be aware of is, is the movie Food, Inc. If you have not seen this movie, you absolutely need to see this movie. I don't care if you're not interested in farming at all or homesteading or anything, but this movie is the basic 411 on the food system and how we can do it better, where we're failing, where we're succeeding. And, and that, when we saw that movie a few years back, that was one of the big catalysts that really, really pushed us to become more self-sufficient, more independent, and treat our food with a way that we're gonna really like when it's inside of us. So please check out that movie, Food Inc. It will benefit everybody watching, everybody listening, honestly. <laughs> the science is in. If you have a homestead, prep, whatever, farmy thingy, you need chickens and chickens need you. Okay, so I really am trying to sell the whole chicken thing a little hard, aren't I? Well, that's because for us, it's an absolute no-brainer. I mean, you get fresh meat, no GMO, organic, free-range chicken at an incredibly low per pound cost that these animals are loved and treated with respect and dignity. They're not crammed in a tiny little box and never see the light of day. Tyson, Tyson. Anyway, uh, so for us, it's absolutely a no-brainer, but I do want to point out that for some people, you may not want or need or, or frankly, could handle chickens. And I have a video that you should check out that if you're kind of sitting on the fence that you should watch to see if this is really for you, if you're kind of on that, I'm not really sure kind of phase thing. So check it out, it's in our YouTube page. So if I could sum up in just a brief, brief video, I would say, Get chickens. 
I am Brad with BigFamilyHomestead.com. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. It truly, really does help our family out. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, peep show. <laughs> and you have yourself an amazing day. Chickens! Holy smokes!